everyone thanks for visiting my channel if you are new here welcome I am Carol the thrifty chic housewife I'm so glad that you stopped by and I hope that you will consider subscribing in the description box below my video I've listed all of my social media and I hope that you will take a look there and follow me there as well so today we are gonna be canning up some delicious chicken pot pie filling I promised you guys this video so uh, I'm keeping true to my promise and we are going to can some up today now this recipe is not quote unquote pie filling it it's technically it is chicken stew it is the recipe in the all new ball book of canning you guys know that I love this book I can a lot of stuff out of it they have a recipe in here for hearty chicken stew now as I have done research to find a good recipe for using for chicken pot pie filling there are a lot of different things out there. You can use just about any uh, canning safe recipe for chicken soup. You can use that as a base for chicken pot pie filling. I do want to note though that there is this book and you, many of you have asked me about this book, The Complete Guide to Pressure Canning. Um, it is by The Canning Diva. She does have a recipe in here for chicken pot pie filling. However, I have reservations about this book for some reasons. She does have a lot of great ideas in here and I do not want to cut this book down. It is, it is a great reference and she has some great recipes in here, but she does some things that aren't necessarily recommended or tested. And the chicken pot pie filling is one of those recipes. She uses clear gel to thicken it so that it is already pie filling when you take it out of the jar. However, there is there has been no testing done for using clear gel and pressure canning. So I'm I don't feel I'm not gonna share that this recipe for that reason. I originally I was going to use this recipe and just not include the clear gel, which would be totally safe to do. She's not doing anything else that's not recommended. Um, all the ingredients that she uses in her canning times are all appropriate. It's just the clear gel that's in question here. So if you like this recipe, you could can it up. I just would not include the clear gel. Um, the one reason why I did not use this recipe is because she doesn't include potatoes. I like potatoes in my chicken pot pie filling. So I'm going to go a different route. Plus I've been wanting to can this up for you guys anyway. I've canned it before and I know that it's pretty tasty. Um, so anyway, just be aware that she does have a recipe that's um, titled chicken pot pie filling. I don't feel comfortable using it for the reason I just said. She uses clear gel to thicken it and clear gel has only been tested to be used in pie fillings that are water bath canned. So it's up to you what your comfort, le comfort level is. There are different types of canners out there. Um, I'm pretty much a safety girl across the board with most things. There are some things I do that some people would deem not recommended. <laughs> Uh, but for the most part, I'm a safety girl, and since I have nothing to back up that it's safe to use clear gel, it probably is, but I don't. there's no tested re research using it in any pressure canning recipe, so I don't feel comfortable using it for that reason. It's probably safe, it's just not been tested, so you use your own discretion there. But the recipes are kind of similar in their ingredients. The one in this book that I am going to use does include some things that are not traditional in um, chicken pot pie filling. It does include fresh mushrooms, which I'm not a fan of, so I'm gonna leave them out. My husband would be happy if I included them, but I don't care for them, so I'm going to leave them out. Um, and it also includes dry white wine. Now in the past I have canned this just as it is written and it is delicious with the white wine in it, but I'm gonna leave that out this time. So I'm just gonna use chicken stock in place of the white wine. Um, also in this recipe, and this is true for a lot of recipes in this book, um, it calls for three cups of cubed skinned and boned raw chicken. Most of the recipes in this book, it does allow for using raw meat. However, when I made this recipe in the past, I wasn't really happy with the 
uh, texture of my chicken. So I have cooked my chicken off for this time. So you can do either one. Um, I, in light of full disclosure, I've not canned a whole lot of meat. I do have canned some. There are a few videos. I do have a few videos on canning meat on my channel, but I haven't canned a lot to say that I have a ton of experience canning meat just because I don't think it looks very pretty in the jar. So I've kind of steered away from canning much meat unless I can make it look pretty. Um, anyway, but I have done a lot of research and many people say that chicken and meat in general is better at least par cooked uh, before you can it up. So that's why I'm going to go that route with this recipe this time. But if you want to follow the recipe as written, it's totally fine. And the recipe was tested using raw chicken. So there's that. The other thing about this recipe is they are only giving instructions for processing in pint jars. I do believe that is because they have um, used mushrooms and mushrooms are only approved for canning in pint jars. So since I'm leaving the mushrooms out, I am going to pressure can this in quarts and I'm going to pressure can using the times for other chicken soup recipes that include very similar ingredients to what I'm going to be using here. And we're going to process for 90 minutes um, for this your processing time with the mushrooms is an hour and 15 minutes, which is the, the usual time for canning meat, soup, stews, that kind of thing uh, for pints. So I am feel very comfortable in going up to the 90 minutes for processing in quarts, but only because I'm leaving the mushrooms out. So if you include the mushrooms, I would only can this in pints. So there's that. The other thing that's in this recipe that's not in many other, haven't seen it in any other chicken soup, chicken stew type recipes is it does call for one tablespoon of bottled lemon juice. If I had to guess, I would say it was because of the mushrooms. I don't know that for sure. There's nothing else in here that is not, that cannot be canned without the addition of lemon juice. So I'm thinking that it probably has something to do with the mushrooms. Even though I'm leaving mushrooms out, I'm gonna go ahead and include the lemon juice. Um, lemon and chicken are delicious together. Lemon does enhance the flavor of chicken and vegetables as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and include it. You could probably leave it out. I would feel comfortable leaving it out if I'm not including the mushrooms. So um, those are just, just a little background on that. I am going to be doubling this recipe um, because it only makes, as written, it only makes six pint jars, which would only give me three quarts, which is not really worth my time for pressure canning. So I, all the amounts that I'm going to use are doubling this recipe. So those are my changes. Those are my reasons. Those are my whys for the changes I'm making. So I hope all of that makes sense. Um, I will list in the description box below the changes that I am making. Um, but like I said, if you have this book, and you want to include the mushrooms, go ahead and can up the recipe as is. Just make sure you only can in pints if you include them. So, all right, so what we need to do to get started, like I said, I already cooked off my chicken. It calls for three cups of your chicken um, and I'm doubling the recipe. So I have six cups. That was about three fairly large chicken breasts. I just um, poached them and I'm going to use my uh, water that I poached them in as my chicken broth. You could use, um, cause it does call for chicken stock or bone broth. Um, it calls for five cups, but I'm also leaving out the wine. So we're going to need about eight cups or two quarts of stock for this. I'm going to use the chicken or the water that I cooked my chicken off in, I'm going to use that broth as my stock. So I've already got the chicken cooked. My stock is hanging out. It's all ready to go. But the first thing that you, they want us to do is they're giving us the okay to use butter. This is one time that it is okay to use butter. Anytime that they're, I know dairy is an 
usually a no for canning but if you are using a tested recipe which this is from ball so this is definitely a tested recipe it does allow for three tablespoons of butter I'm going to be using six because I'm doubling the recipe and we need to melt our butter and we're going to add our onions, mushrooms if you're using them, and we're going to saute those for about three minutes. And then we're going to start adding our other ingredients and then, um, and I will go over that as I'm adding it. It's just your typical vegetables, potatoes, carrots, celery, onion, and some spices. And your chicken so it's really very basic and it is a great starter for chicken pot pie make sure you stay tuned to the end of my video because I'm going to show you how to take a jar of this and turn it into a delicious pot pie for dinner so um, anyway we're gonna go ahead and get started I'm gonna get my butter in my pot and we're gonna start sauteing our onions okay guys here we go I have six tablespoons of butter in my stock pot to that I'm going to add three cups of chopped onions and again I'm doubling the recipe here so we need six cups of chopped onions and we're going to saute those if you're using your mushrooms you would also add the mushrooms here we're going to saute those for about three minutes or so until they start to soften and then we're going to start sauteing adding and sauteing our other ingredients okay guys my onions are pretty soft so we are ready to add our other ingredients. So we're gonna add one cup of celery. We're going to add three cups of diced carrots. And we're going to add three cups of diced potatoes. I am using red potatoes. Make sure you peel your potatoes. Um, the recipe does call for Yukon Gold, but it doesn't really matter what type of potato you use here. Russets usually aren't recommended, but lots of people can with them and have no trouble with them. So use whatever potatoes you have on hand. Just make sure you peel them for safety. And we're gonna saute that for about two minutes and then we are going to add our stock. Okay guys, our, we've um, sauteed this for about two minutes. So now we can add our stock. I am going to be adding, like I said, the eight cups or two quarts of stock. Uh, my stock also includes a bay leaf. I put it in there when I was uh, cooking off my chicken for flavor. And a bay leaf is recommended in this recipe, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here now. And the other thing that's recommended to add at this time are all of your seasonings. So um, they are using pretty basic seasonings. This is my take on what I like in my chicken pot pie filling. So we're going to add about a tablespoon or so of lemon pepper. We're gonna add about a teaspoon of celery seed. A couple of teaspoons of dried thyme. And then I'm gonna add a tablespoon or so, maybe closer to two tablespoons of parsley flakes. I love parsley flakes in my chicken pot pie filling. Um, the other thing that I typically add is poultry seasoning. It's not recommended to use poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning does contain sage and sage tends to turn bitter when it's canned. So I'm gonna leave that out and I will add it when we turn this into actual chicken pot pie filling. The other thing I'm gonna add is about two teaspoons of seasoned salt. And the other thing that I like to add, and this is totally optional, most pe some people have very strong opinions about this. I like it, I'm going to add it. I don't have any issues with adding it. I'm going to add the organic, better than bullion roasted chicken base. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon. Um, if you are concerned about adding that when in canning, I know some people don't like it, I don't have a problem with it. So just leave it out if you don't like that ingredient or you can add it when you turn your quart jars into uh, pie filling. So there's that. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and we're gonna let it simmer for 10 minutes. Okay guys, I'm coming back. I'm having a blonde moment. Apparently I can't do math today. So your eight cups is if you're doing the recipe as written in the book. I doubled everything and forgot to double my stock, sorry. So we need 16 cups roughly 16 cups of stock if you are not using the wine. 
if you're using the wine, then part of that needs to be wine. So anyway, I'm adding the correct amount of stock this time. We're going to bring it up to a boil, reduce it and let it simmer for 10 minutes. And then we're gonna add chicken, peas and lemon juice and we're ready for canning. Okay guys, once it comes up to a boil, reduce your heat so that it is just simmering and we're going to simmer for 10 minutes. Okay guys, our 10 minutes are up, so we're gonna go ahead and add the last of our ingredients. So I'm gonna add about a half, cup and a half of peas. I'm just using frozen peas. And then we're also going to add six cups of, I'm using pre-cooked cubed chicken breast, but you can use whatever you like. If you prefer thighs, you can use thighs. You can use a combination of chicken parts and you can use either cooked or raw. That's entirely up to you. And then the last thing we're gonna add is our lemon juice. Again, I'm pretty sure the lemon juice has to do with the mushrooms, which I'm leaving out, but it's not a big deal. Just another layer of flavor, right? So we need two tablespoons of lemon juice. We're gonna bring all that back up to a boil and then we are set for canning. Okay guys, I brought my soup back up to a boil with everything in it, so we are all set for canning. Soups are a low acid food, so we must pressure can this, so you need a pressure canner. You cannot water bath can it, you cannot steam can it, so uh, make sure you have a pressure canner that is in good working order. Uh, we are going to be canning in quart jars. Modern canning guidelines state that you do not need to pre-sterilize jars and lids if you're canning for 10 minutes or more, and we are. We're going to be canning for 90 minutes in quart jars. If you're canning in pints, it's 75 minutes. Just be sure that if you did include the mushrooms, you can only can this in pints, not quarts. I want to make that clear. So I left my mushrooms out. That's why I'm canning in quarts. And I'm going to be canning for 90 minutes. We are looking for one inch headspace. And yeah, I think we're good. So I'm gonna bring you in close. We're gonna ladle our soup in our jars and get to canning. Hey guys, the other thing I wanted to mention is always make sure you taste your soup before you put it in your jars. You can always doctor it up after you put it in your jars, but I like to make sure that mine is pretty spot on before I can it up. And I did taste it and it was delicious. So the spices and everything were good for me. I do have three inches of near simmering water in my canner ready to go. I wanted to make that clear. My rack is also in there, so we are good to go. So we are going to grab a couple of hot jars. Um, I think I failed to mention that I'm keeping my jars hot in a sink full of hot water. You do wanna make sure your jars are hot here. We don't want any thermal shock. Oh. The other thing I failed to mention, having another blonde moment today, I guess, you need to make sure you remove your bay leaf. It won't hurt anything if it gets stuck in there, but I'm sure no one wants to eat a bay leaf. So try to fish out your bay leaf. And then we're going to ladle in our soup. And this is great, not just for chicken pot pie filling, although it's very tasty for that. Obviously you can just use it as soup or you can thicken it and have a stew. It's entirely up to you. Lots of options here. It's so pretty. Lots of great color. So comforting on a cold winter's day or if you're feeling under the weather. One inch headspace. So you want to once you get to your headspace, the correct headspace, you want to use a debubbling tool, a chopstick, or a plastic butter knife to release your bubbles. Shouldn't be too many. It's pretty liquidy. If your headspace changes, you can add more and adjust. But I think mine is pretty spot on. And we're going to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar and clean the rims of our jar. And we're going to add our lids. And then you want to add your bands to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. Look how pretty. Doesn't that look delicious? Okay guys, I got six quarts of delicious soup or 
chicken pot pie base, whatever you want to call it. So what I do now, for those of you who are new and may not know this trick, is I take the white vinegar I have left over and I put it in my canning water. That prevents minerals that are in your water from collecting on the outside of your jars and making them look cloudy. So they stay nice and pretty during the canning process. So now we need to add our lid. I have the All-American canner, so you wanna line up the notch with the arrow on the lid. And then you're going to tighten your thumb screws two at a time opposites. And then we're gonna crank our heat up to high until we see a steady stream of steam coming out of our steam vent. Once that happens, we're gonna let that go for 10 minutes and then we can add our weight. When we get there, I'll bring you back in so that you can get a good visual of what I'm talking about, especially if you're new to candy. Okay guys, we have a steady stream of steam coming out of our steam vent. So we're going to allow that to happen for 10 minutes. Once our 10 minutes are up, we will add our weight. Um, I'm going to be canning at 10 pounds of pressure. I'm below a thousand feet, so that's appropriate for me. If you are at a different altitude, you need to find out what your altitude is and what is appropriate for you. I am using the All-American Canner, which is a dual gauge canner, so I have a dial and I have a weight. If you have a dial gauge canner, you're gonna be canning at 11 pounds of pressure. And again, you need to adjust for your altitude. So you'll have to check your altitude, find out what PSI is appropriate for you. So we are going to vent for 10 minutes. When we come back, we're going to apply our weight, bring it up to pressure, and then we can start our processing time. Okay guys, we've been venting for 10 minutes, so it's time to add our weight. So I'm gonna find the 10 pounds of pressure hole for me, and I'm going to put that on my vent. Uh, my temperature will increase and my dial gauge will go will show the correct psi for the all american canner just as an fyi to those of you who may be new um my canner will start my weight will start to rock even though it's a dual gauge canner it will rock at 10 psi even though if you have a true dial gauge canner you should be at 11 psi they don't always correspond, so if you are new to the All-American Canner, don't look for it to necessarily, your weight to rock necessarily when your dial reaches the correct PSI. If you, if you read your um, manual, it will tell you that the dial gauge on this canner is just for reference. You always go by the weight. So even though it has both, it works as a weighted gauge canner. So we're going to start our processing time when our weight starts to rock. If you have a dial gauge only, you will start timing when you reach 11 PSI. And there we go. So we're ready to start timing. We are going to set our timer for 90 minutes. The other thing that we need to do is we need to reduce our heat. You do not want your weight rocking constantly throughout the entire canning session unless your manual says that's what's supposed to happen. So for the All-American Canner, we want it to rock one to three, one to four times a minute. So I need to reduce my heat. You want to reduce your heat slowly. We don't want big temperature fluctuations in our canner. That can cause siphoning. So slowly reduce your heat just to maintain rocking one to three, one to four times a minute if you have this canner. If you have another canner with different instructions, adjust your heat so that you're following your canner's instructions. I know there is a canner out there that has a weight that's supposed to rock gently, consistently throughout the entire process. So make sure that you know what you're supposed to be doing. Also, if you have a dial gauge canner only, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're maintaining 11 PSI. Okay guys, our time is up, so I'm going to turn my heat off. We are going to allow our canner to return to zero pressure naturally, and then once I'm back at zero pressure, I will wait 10 minutes and remove my weight, and then we can see our delicious chicken stew, chicken pot pie filling, uh, whatever you want to call it, and we'll see how good it is. Okay guys, we are all done with our processing time. And our chicken pot pie filling is smelling and looking pretty amazing. Give you a close up. Doesn't that look good? So pretty, so nutritious. And it's gonna be great in pot pie. But, and we're gonna do pot pie here in just a second, but I did wanna mention 
that you could also make creamed chicken with this. I have a video for that on my channel. Um, so creamed chicken with this over biscuits would be fantastic. Um, and of course chicken pot pie. And you could also just leave it as soup. You could even thicken it a little bit and have it as stew. You could add noodles to it. There's a lot of different ways to use this. So it's just a great starter to have on your shelf, a great base, but we're gonna use it for chicken pot pie filling. Okay guys, here we go. I've got uh, my skillet is on medium high heat and I am melting four tablespoons of butter in my pan. And to that, we are going to add four tablespoons of flour. Just sprinkle that in. We are making a basic roux. And we wanna cook that for about a minute to thicken. We wanna cook the raw flour flavor out of the flour. Uh, I did fail to mention I have my oven preheated to 425 and I've rolled out my pie crust. So we're all set to go. All right, once your flour has cooked for about a minute, we are going to take our, a jar of our uh, chicken pot pie filling and we are going to just pour in the liquid part. So I'm just gonna strain out the solids for now. and then we're gonna whisk it. And we're gonna bring this up to a boil and we're gonna let it boil for several minutes until it gets nice and thick for us and then we're gonna stir our solids back in. Now, we talked about using the poultry seasoning and how it's not a good idea to use that in canning. Well, I'm gonna put some in here because I love that in my pot pie. So if you wanted to, you could even use some fresh herbs here and I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. That's entirely up to you. Use it, not use it, doesn't really matter. Just depends on what you like. And it's starting to thicken up. Okay, once your uh, gravy basically has come up to a nice boil here, and you can see that it's gotten really nice and thick here. If you want a thinner gravy, use less butter and flour. If you want a thicker gravy, you can always add more butter and flour. Uh, it's just your ratio should be equal. So you should be using equal parts butter to flour. So the other thing that I'm going to do also is to just test it, make sure I don't need to season it any further. Mm. Totally delicious. So we're done here. I'm gonna turn my heat off and I'm just gonna stir in my solids. Look at that. Perfect chicken pot pie filling. So now we're ready to pour our filling into our pie shell. Now I have a pretty deep dish here. If you wanted a thicker uh, pie, you could use more than one jar. But this will be good for Alan and I. If you wanted to do a, a true deep dish, you really could use almost two quarts. All right, and then you just take your top crust Put that on top of your pie filling. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine rarely is, but I like to tuck everything in. If you don't like the extra crust, you can always cut it off, but I like having a nice crust on my pie. And you can make your edge pretty. Do a little fluted edge if you want. You can make this ahead of time. If you're gonna make it ahead of time, I recommend that your you let your filling completely cool before you put it in your pie crust. Otherwise your pie crust will get soggy if you don't bake it right away. Okay, 
And then just take a knife and put some vents in your top crust. Some people like to brush the top of their pie crust with an egg wash. I'm not gonna do that. I don't really care about that, but it will make it shiny and nice and golden brown. So I'm gonna put this in my preheated 425 degree oven on top of a uh, cookie sheet because sometimes they bubble over. And we're gonna bake it for about 45 minutes. Okay guys, we're all done. I baked my pot pie for about 30 minutes. I know I said 45, but you really don't need that much time um, because everything is cooked. So we really just want to bake our pastry so that it's nice and golden brown. Mine is, so we are ready to cut it. I've let it rest for about 20 minutes. You always wanna let pot pie rest for a little while before you cut it. It's still pretty warm, but it's been sitting for 20 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and cut into it and see what we got going on. But I think it's gonna be very, very tasty. It really needs to cool about 30 minutes. It's still steaming. But you can see how beautiful it is. Look at that. Beautiful flaky crust. I will leave the um, the recipe for my crust in the description box for you, but you can see, look at how flaky. So nice. So let's give it a taste here. It's still really hot. It's a party in your mouth, guys. It is so good. The vegetables are nice and tender, but not mushy. You got that flaky crust and it came together in less than 10 minutes. Unless you count the time to make your crust, making the filling was no big deal. So I know it's not necessarily what people look for in a meal in a jar. You want it all prepared, but it's really not safe. We don't know if it's safe to use the clear gel and we cannot, per safe canning guidelines, use flour or extra butter to thicken it in the jar. So I think that this is a great alternative. Um, you still have all of the hard stuff done. Making a roux and throwing it all together is not hard at all. As you could see, it was very simple to do. Anyone can do it, but you have the hard work done by having this canned up and sitting on your shelf. So I hope you'll give it a try. If you have any questions or comments for me, feel free to leave them in the comment section. As always, you guys, I appreciate you all so very much, all of your kind words and your encouragement to continue bringing you good content. I do the best I can to bring you the best content possible. So I just appreciate all of your kind words. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.